Greetings to all my fellow watch enthusiasts on YouTube and Facebook and wherever else this video might be seen and shared. Celine Driver once again bringing you another unboxing, well not really unboxing since there's no box, and review of a watch that is not mine. Uh, I was uh, recently um, gifted, if you will, uh, not gifted, but uh, given a, uh, a, a grouping of watches from my uh, friend and fellow YouTuber, Random Rob. Uh, he sent four watches over to me uh, to review. And then, of course, I had to send them back. And uh, in the case of a couple of them, I really don't want to, but I have to. And uh, this was one of them. Uh, no box. On, on any of them, uh, obviously. It cuts down on the shipping costs. But uh, he did send me this uh, lovely uh, watch from the micro brand, William Wood. Now, you might recall recently I did a review of another William Wood. Uh, this uh, That was the William Wood Fearless. Uh, that was a, a tour watch. That one is now obviously on its way to the next guy in the uh, watch tour. And that bezel is off-center. That's terrible. How can you start a video with the bezel off-center? There we go. Uh, but he did send me another one. And this one is the William Wood Bronze. And that's its its name, the Bronze. They, they, they don't call it anything else. And uh, it usually, I, I would guess, arrives in a shiny condition. This one has already started to uh, get a little patina on it. And you can see this one is number 120 of 200. So these are limited edition watches. I will leave a link to the William Wood website uh, in the description in case you want to check out uh, any of their other offerings, the Fearless, the Bronze. I think they have a couple of other lines. Um, the, this one obviously is in there, what they call Ruby Red, which is, you know, I'm not, I'm I, I, up front, admission. I'm not a big fan of red watches. Um, I don't own any. Uh, my father owned a few. Um, I'm trying to sell those off. <laughs> I'm not a fan of red watches. They, they just doesn't do anything for me. But this this isn't bad. It's not a bright in your face red. It's it's a very subtle red on the bezel and, and on the watch face. Now the um, the strap, uh, you know, the the underside and the in the small parts on the front are are pretty bright but that is broken up nicely by this uh, darker textured section of the silicon rubber strap which in in the case of uh, most silicon rubber straps i'm not a fan but in the case of this one it's very smooth it's it's very flexible it doesn't smell bad it, it feels great on uh, to the touch it really is a very nice uh, rubber strap. Now, quickly, on uh, the background of the William Wood, this is a London-based, London-assembled, now London, England, or UK, if you prefer. Uh, it is a London, UK, Britain, assembled watch. It does use a Japanese movement, but it is assembled and shipped from uh, London, Great Britain, England, UK. I'm trying to cover all the names so I don't get a hate in the uh, in the comments. Uh, the founder's grandfather was William Wood. He was a member of a local fire brigade. He was uh, credited with helping to save five children, ranging in age from one year old to five years old, from a house fire. Uh, was considered a heroic event as it should be and was given a certificate of merit. That's why the logo uh, for the company is a old style 
London Fire Brigade Fireman's Helmet. And that's why the company is named after uh, that hero. It's a great story. It, it's on the website. Uh, oops. Get rid of part of my notes there so I don't confuse them with other parts. Uh, it's a great story. It's on the website. You can read it for yourself. As I said, I'll link the uh, description in the uh, uh, link the website in the description. It's a very nice bronze case, uh, bronze um, screw down crown that disengages very nicely with an audible and tactile pop. Has integrated crown guards. First position out from uh, neutral or winding position uh, is allow is allows you allowing you to change the date. Second position hacks the movement, allows you to set the time, push it all in. Movement starts up, a couple of turns, the threads re-engage, and you get your water resistance back. Now, a lot of, uh, and on a side note, a lot of people have uh, mentioned to me in my videos about how uh, I tend to leave uh, screw down crowns unscrewed. And they're all, you know, twitchy and nervous about, you know, dirt's going to get in there or, you know, something bad's going to happen. Okay, on watches that are not mine, like this one, I'll screw the crown back in. But my watches with screw down crowns, I generally leave unscrewed until I wear them because they might need winding, they might need adjustment. And not only is it kind of a little bit of a pain to unscrew every single crown every single time, but if you take a good look under a loop or a magnifying glass, the threads on a screw down crown are really fine threads and they're not going to take a hell of a lot of abuse. So, and since all of my watches are either watch cases or winders, um, they're protected from dust and dirt to a great extent. So. To save wear and tear on the threads and prevent cross-threading, which is really easy, ask me how I know. That's why I leave my screw-down crowns unscrewed. Okay, now you know. You have a 120-click bezel. It's a nice vocal bezel. It's a little on the stiff side because this is a relatively new watch, but it does move smoothly. And when you lock it in, like I've just done, there's no slop. I mean, it moves just fractionally, but it doesn't unclick from the uh, from from where the uh, spring locks it. The bezel is bronze. The um, the insert is aluminum, or if you prefer, aluminium, which is silliness. But then again, they've always said about the Americans and the British, two people separated by a common language. You know, whatever. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, there are two colorways on the bronze watch. There is this one, and then there is a uh, sapphire blue version where the insert and the face and the, and the strap are... I don't know about the strap. I forgot. I looked at the picture. I, I The strap didn't... The color didn't register with me. It may be blue or it may be black. Or it may be... I, you know what? I think it was this color. This kind of... Um, uh, what do they call it? Fire gear tan. I think it was the tan, actually, when I, when I think about it. I don't think it was blue. But you can look at the website and tell me, you know, how bad my memory is. It did come with these extra straps... Uh, We've seen this one before, the uh, the Fire Yellow, um, when I reviewed the uh, Fearless. Same strap, but it does come with a bronze uh, pin buckle. And so does, the, uh, so does the tan one, as you can see. Signed pin buckle. So that's a nice touch, because on the, uh, on the Fearless, the... Um, the pin buckle was IP coated black uh, metal. So this one is bronze to match 
the bronze watch, which is, you know, a nice touch. And again, you see the bronze pin buckle on the uh, Firehouse Red um, bracelet. A little bit bigger watch this one is. It's a 40 mil 41 millimeter uh, case. A little bit thicker at 14.6 millimeter. That's owing to the uh, sapphire crystal with that kind of not really boxed edge, but the, the, the kind of sloping upward uh, edge. Can't really, I don't know. Maybe you could call it a box crystal, but it is a sapphire. It did say in the description sapphire crystal on this watch. On the other one, it didn't say that. It's a glass crystal. So same price, though. I mean, they're both watches at the same price. So it's really hard for me to imagine that the, the crystal on the Fearless wasn't sapphire. But it didn't say it. 47 millimeter on the lug to lug, 20 millimeter lug width. As I said, bronze case, bronze um, bezel, aluminum insert, sapphire crystal, NH and, and sapphire on the backside, and an NH35 movement, very, very undecorated movement. I do not know why they didn't even attempt a little bit of decoration other than their logo on the rotor with an exhibition case back. That seems to be a little silly, but okay. I'm going to give you a wrist shot since I didn't do that yet. I usually do that much sooner in the video. Hang on. There we go. There we go. And on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, you can see this 41 millimeter watch by 47 millimeter lug to lug fits beautifully. It's very, very comfortable to wear. It's not, uh, it's, it's the perfect, it's one of the perfect size. 41 to 43 millimeter for me is, is great size. 44 works very well too. Anything past that, it begin. It's, it's not uncomfortable, but it sort of depends on the watch. I generally like to stay in the 42 to 44 millimeter. Uh, 41 to 43 seems to be a really good uh, fallback range as well. Beautiful watch. Definitely, uh, in my opinion, worth the money. And I think once the bronze... Um, I mean, I live in Florida. Bronze will patina in very nicely in the spring and summertime when the humidity is up around 5,000%. Right now, as I shoot this, it's December of 2022. We are now in what we laughably call winter. <laughs> we don't get much of a winter here, but in, in our so-called winter, the humidity does drop into about the 50% range. So you're not going to get a lot of patina action right now, but if I had this watch in the summertime, this thing would darken up and change color quite nicely. And so would the uh, pin buckle as well. It's really a beautifully made watch. Uh, William Wood is uh, definitely doing it right. Definitely worth your consideration. 100 meter water resistance. So even though this is a dive style watch, does have the screw down crown, does have the dive bezel. Uh, does have the screw down case back. I wouldn't go too deep with this watch, um, but it is a swimmable and snorkelable, is that even a word, and diveable watch. So it could definitely be done uh, safely with this watch. So have at it. Link is uh, down in the description below if you're interested in taking a look at it. I think it's definitely worth a look. So I hope you found this video to be entertaining, useful, and informative. If you did, please click that thumbs up button for me. That does help with the YouTube search algorithms. Helps draw people to the channel by helping the video become more easily and searchable. Comments, questions, suggestions down below. I do read them all. I do respond to them all. However, if you are going to troll me or try to, good luck. 
uh, or you're going to leave uh, links to bad places on the uh, internet, I'm simply going to delete the comment and block the commenter. There's one every time. Every time. If you're new to the channel, you just found me, welcome. Glad you found me. Glad you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you'll enjoy many more. Please, uh, as a reward for this fine entertainment and information, click that red subscribe button down below there. And don't forget, forget to click the bell icon too. <coughs> Pardon me. So that when I upload new videos or I do a live stream, you will be alerted to these events. And as I always say at the end of my videos, it is a crazy old world out there. It is not getting any less crazy. So please, be careful out there, stay safe, be well, see you soon.